Our next uh, session, which we're going to start, is, uh, is from Rohit. And he's going to touch a little bit on um, Contiv. Uh, and his presentation will be focused on how you can push policies to secure your application inside the container. So it is going to be an interesting talk. So go ahead. Great. Floor is Thank up. you so much. Um, right. So my name is uh, Rohit Agarwala. I'm a senior technical lead in the, in the cloud platform and services group at Cisco. Um, so the topic here today that I'm going to cover is networking and policy for your containerized applications, dev test to production. Um, before we get into you know, how Contiv, uh, or what is Contiv, and what is Contiv providing uh, specifically to this topic, um, just want to get a quick show of hands of how many people have played with containers or know something about containers. All right, excellent. Uh, I think about more than 50% of the audience here is familiar with containers. So containers, again, is, a, is the new trend of you know, decomposing your m monolithic application into microservices, uh, where basically your container has all the dependencies and the packages. And there are, of course, other benefits of leveraging the host operating system to bring up a quick, small component of your entire application architecture. Uh, and then enabling that all that deployment through a platform uh, that you know, in a way, keeps track of how many number of instances you want that to be deployed. So there are container platforms that do that job for you. Um, so containers have become, you know, kind of the new way or the new lifecycle management for uh, modern applications. Uh, but from a networking and policy point of view, they bring along new challenges. Um, if you think from a networking perspective, uh, you know, previously we just had like bare metal servers that were connected to switches and you basically provisioned them on a single VLAN, um, you know, by an ops team or something and, and it all worked. You know, then came the wave of, you know, virtualization with VMware and in OpenStack uh, where you could easily spin up, you know, X number of virtual machines on multiple hosts. And then, you know, we got the hypervisor switch come in, you know, open V switch, Linux bridge, all of these, you know, the switching layer was starting to get pushed further into the host. Um, and VMs provided you with that, uh, you know, the VM networking was provided by that layer on the host. But now microservices and containers are the new way of developing applications. And these containers can basically be deployed within virtual machines or can also be deployed directly on bare metal servers. So from a networking perspective, now you have a new set of challenges that you need to think of that as you spin up these containers within virtual machines or within bare metal servers, how do you connect them with each other? That's the first part. Uh, the second part is, well, not everything is going to move to containers tomorrow, right? I mean, every technology adoption curve, I mean, if you look at it, it, it takes a while before it becomes mainstream. So there will be still parts of your application, like your database may be running on a bare metal server. But you still need to be able to connect from your containers to that bare metal server in some shape or form. And you need all of this to be automatically provisioned so that your developers that are focusing on spinning up these containers, their workflow, trying to develop the business logic for their application, they don't get affected. Under the hood, everything should just work right out of the box for them. So that's kind of the first set of problems that we try and solve. Like, how do I achieve networking in a multi-tenant environment where I'm providing isolation and providing the tenancy in a container deployment? The second problem that, that we, we will address here is uh, you know, the security and the policy aspect. Uh, so once you have deployed these containers in, in your environment, you want to control the connectivity. There is one aspect that you can keep them in a same segment, which could be any sort of uh, you know, networking backend that enables to them to be in the same segment. But you still want to define at some level of uh, you know, granularity in terms of controlling the ports that are getting exposed out of your container. Uh, you want to be able to define you know, egress and ingress rules in terms of traffic that's coming inside your container. right? Uh, we have been seeing those kind of functionality being implemented on the host through using NAT tables. We have seen that implemented on our switches and routers uh, on, uh, you know, through ACLs. Uh, so there has to be some mechanism that ties this policy grouping construct of identifying what containers can talk to each other and what are the 
application ports that need to be exposed to not, not just other containers in your deployment, but to other infrastructure pieces as well, that capability needs to be built in. So these are kind of the two problems that, that we are trying to solve here. First, again, in summary, is the networking aspect. Second is once we are able to connect these containers, how do I provide security and policy enforcement on these multiple endpoints that are coming up within VM as well as on bare metal server? So with that problem statement in mind, um, now let me introduce you to Contiv, what it is, and how it is basically helping you solve the two problems that I just talked about. Uh, so Contiv is a Cisco-sponsored 100% open source project. Um, everything that we are doing in Contiv is available under Apache v2 license. It's part of an open source community. Uh, and it's built on two main things, uh, which is kind of captured at the bottom of the slide. Uh, the first thing is that it is the most powerful container networking fabric. And the, the reason that I say that is because it provides you as a developer or even as an ops team to configure multiple networking backends for your container deployment. Uh, so whether you are using VLANs in an L2 mode uh, with Contiv or you're using overlays, if VXLAN is your choice, or you know, popular uh, mechanisms such as L3 BGP, which is, which is starting to become popular with, with container deployments, you could enable that as well. Uh, or integration with Cisco infrastructure like ACI, uh, you could enable that as well. Uh, keep in mind, this, these are all four different options that are available as part of the same entire Contiv framework. And you as a developer have a flexibility to basically uh, work with your ops team to define what backend is, is, is going to work within your organization. So that's, that's the first part that we, we, we provide all of these options built into the fabric itself. Uh, the second point here is the rich policy model. So this goes to the second problem that we are trying to solve, which is that we have an a inbuilt policy model within Contiv itself. So once you have the container connectivity, you can define groups and endpoints and policies and rules. Uh, these are objects that are available through APIs uh, as part of the Contiv solution. Uh, and your developers can basically define these and associate them with their containers or pods when they are getting deployed. Uh, I, in fact, have a live demo, and we'll see how we are, in fact, associating pods in a Kubernetes environment when they are getting deployed uh, to different networks and being applied uh, different groups. So, so again, uh, networking policy, uh, that's all captured with Contiv. Uh, any networking, any infrastructure, so we know uh, from a deployment perspective that containers can be deployed on bare metal servers or on virtual machines, whether those are on VMware or an OpenStack cluster, or even on a public cloud such as AWS or Azure or Google Cloud. So we make sure that Contiv as a networking and a policy uh, Lego block for your container environments, irrespective of any of these infrastructure deployment models, uh, we, we enable you to, uh, uh, or you can deploy and work in those environments. Uh, any platform, um, again, you know, uh, with the advent of multiple container platforms such as Docker Swarm, and Kubernetes, and Mesosphere, and Pivotal Cloud Foundry. Uh, there are multiple of these platforms, uh, and we have provided integration uh, through the networking model of, of all of these different platforms uh, for Contiv as well. So in case if you're deploying Docker Swarm, uh, you know, Docker Swarm has a container networking model uh, as the driver model to integrate with different drivers. So we have a Contiv CNM driver within Docker. Uh, if you're using Kubernetes, uh, they follow the container networking interface model, which also became the 10th project within the uh, CNCF foundation just uh, earlier this week. So we have the Contiv CNI driver as well to enable you to connectivity for your pods that are getting deployed within a Kubernetes environment. Uh, similarly, OpenShift, uh, that is the uh, enterprise, or th that is the Red Hat's uh, uh, platform uh, that is with extensions on top of Kubernetes. So we again have the Contiv integration with an OpenShift platform as well. Um, so just to summarize in terms of the roles that, that you see in the slide, the DevOps role and the IT admin role. So these are kind of the two primary roles that, that we kind of see with the new uh, trend of microservices and how these two roles work together. Your IT admin is basically caring about, hey, I, I'm going to give you a container platform. Here's the physical infrastructure. Here's the networking fabric. You know, go deploy your applications. And so it's important to make sure that the, the container networking and the policy block 
is integrating with IT components that your IT administrator cares about. So within Contiv, for example, we provide integration with ACI because ACI has other advantages from a networking perspective and a policy perspective. That's one advantage. Then from an RBAC L, uh, and LDAP perspective, we want to make sure that if you have an active directory installation uh, within your data center, we want to provide the authentication and authorization for different roles that are consuming and defining these policies within your container environment. Uh, and thirdly, uh, integration with VMs as well as with bare metal servers. So your container traffic that needs to communicate with these other components within your data center, that's what your network admin or the IT admin cares about. So we make sure that we provide those semantics or we provide those capabilities in Contiv to enable that seamless connectivity across different uh, uh, resources that are connected in your data center to the networking fabric. From a DevOps perspective, all you care about is, hey, I'm going to define my application uh, profile. I'm going to define my YAML file that consists of uh, the images that I'm going to download from a Kubernetes point of view, for example, or I'm going to define the networks, uh, as well as the policies that are going to be applied to these networks. And there you go. That's it. So you will see in that in the demo that uh, from an application or a DevOps perspective, your workflow does not change, but you're consuming these application policies that are being defined uh, by your IT administrator, and you can basically just use them in your application directly. So we announced uh, just at DockerCon, you know, uh, that was about, I think, last month, uh, Contiv 1.0. Uh, again, this is uh, generally available as an upstream open source project. Uh, when I say 1.0, it's a 1.0 open source version that's available. Uh, these are some of the features, you know, new features that have been introduced in 1.0. Um, important to keep in mind here is the integration and the support that we are providing, both from a community perspective as well as uh, from a Cisco perspective, because we are going to be able to support the customers that pick our open source uh, code and deploy that in production, so Cisco can stand behind and even support that model. Uh, but we do have an active uh, Slack community. We have a GitHub where, uh, page where all of our code is there, um, and we support against all of the open source pl uh, container platforms such as Kubernetes and Docker Swarm, as well as with the supported platforms such as OpenShift that I talked about. Um, since the Focus here is more about security and policy, so I thought it would be useful to give you know, uh, a rundown of what the policy model looks like, and then we'll switch into our demo to see how, how, how we are basically making use of this policy model. Um, so here what you can see is as a tenant or as an end user, I basically have these five resources that I care about. Uh, containers or pods is what I'm going to spin up, which basically will capture all of my application dependencies, what images, and everything that I'm using. But in addition to that, uh, Contiv gives you the capabilities to define the other four constructs. So you will start by creating a network as a, as a developer that, hey, I want to be able to spin my containers on the following network. Uh, and the network has properties like the following subnet. It needs to use a gateway. So this is where you will communicate with your DevOps or with your IT admin team to figure out what are those parameters that you need to use. Uh, of course, if you're using something like a VXNA, VXLAN, excuse me, VXLAN tunnel, uh, for your application connectivity, you can pretty much define RFC 1918 IP addresses, uh, and, and you can go, go ahead. But if you're trying to integrate with rest of the data center components, then you want to work with your IT admin. Uh, so once you have defined your network, you will be spinning up basically uh, containers on that network, and, and that will all uh, come well, because now once you connect containers on those networks by using the labels in your policy def in your YAML file, uh, you will be able to connect them onto the net network that has been defined in Contiv. Uh, but if you want to provide the policies as well as the uh, control over the ports that are being exposed, not just within containers, but to the rest of the other components, then you want to start grouping them into something called endpoint groups. So in Contiv, you can basically create these groups, such as my app group and my DB group, and then associate these labels when you're spinning up the containers. So what that would do is that when the containers come up, they will be associated with the app and the DB endpoint group labels. Uh, once you have these groups and, and, and kind of categorized your containers or pods into these groups, you can now apply the policies uh, with rules within those policies to those endpoint groups. So this is kind of how a developer would go about uh, you know, providing the connectivity and the, then defining the constructs of endpoint groups and the policies and the rules that get attached to the network that they have defined. Um, does that make sense? 
Any questions before I switch into the demo? OK. Let's go into the demo here. Uh, let me get out of my PowerPoint. OK. This is a Kubernetes. I'm gonna be, I have a Kubernetes cluster set up. Uh, and uh, I've got Contev as my CNI driver enabled. I'm going to run through a script. Uh, and it has got a bunch of commands. And I'm going to basically walk you through what, what those commands are going to be doing. So the first command here is basically running you know, what are the different nodes that are deployed in my cluster. So I've got three nodes uh, that are running. So one is a master node, two are worker nodes. So when I spin up my pods, they're going to come up on my, on my worker nodes. Um, this is, now I'm getting into the contest part. Uh, I basically set up using my netcuttle utility. Netcuttle is a contest CLI utility that we provide that's a client that basically talks with our contest master. I'm setting a bunch of parameters here. Uh, important to note here is I'm setting up routing, which is for my VXLAN fabric, and I'm defining the VXLAN range as well. So these are important global parameters that you set before you start actually uh, configuring Contev overall, uh, because this remains consistent across your entire Contev deployment. Uh, the next thing that I'm doing, like I had mentioned before, I'm creating a network here. So using my, again, netcuttle netcreate command, I'm defining within the default tenant that I'm going to be using an encapsulation type of VXLAN. I'm defining a subnet, I'm defining a gateway, and I'm telling what network, uh, uh, I'm giving the network name here. Um, and that's what in the next command, I basically did a net ls using context command to list down the two networks that I have. Uh, you will notice here there are two networks. First is an infra network. This is a private internal network that we have within Contiv uh, to actually enable the host on which my pods are coming up to communicate with the containers themselves. Uh, this is required for the Kubernetes health check requirement. Uh, but the network on which our containers are going to be coming up is the data network, which is the new net network that I have defined here. We're going to continue here. This is, this is the part uh, where I'm now starting to basically create those endpoint groups uh, and define basically the policies within those groups. So I've created um, a, a policy called app to db I've created two groups, app and DB group. And I've created three policies within the app to db policy uh, that is to say, deny TCMP, UDP, and ICMP traffic. Um, we'll continue here. Now I've just spun up three pods. Uh, this is where the developer is basically specifying constructs that they have defined uh, using the uh, contiv. So for example, I'm spinning up an app one, YAM, uh, app one component or a pod, and in which I've specified the following labels. I'm specifying which contiv tenant it needs to be part of, I'm specifying the network new net that I just created. And I'm also specifying that it needs to be part of the app group. So labels is a construct that is available in the Kubernetes platform itself. We are basically using that metadata to define and provide that as part of the application uh, deployment itself. So I'm doing that for app one. I'm doing that for app two. And, and I'm also doing that for my DB component. So now I can see I've got three pods that have been spun up. They have got IP addresses assigned here. This is from the subnet that I had created using Contiv. So in my next window here, I'm just going to um, get into my uh, app one container. I just went into that. If I do an IPA, uh, I can see that it's got a 100 uh, uh, IP address uh, from that subnet range that, that has been defined. Uh, if I try to ping, uh, let's say, my 101, pod, which is basically my um, app 2, I'm not able to do that because I don't have the policies yet defined. Similarly, if I do that for, uh, oops, I got the IP address wrong. So let's, I should be able to ping this. Yes. So this is, I'm able to ping this because app 2 and app 1 are part of the same group. But if I'm trying to ping app my DB group, uh, the container in the DB group, I'm not able to do that because I've got that policy enforcement that says that, hey, you are only able to ping to components that are part within your own group. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to proceed here uh, and, and basically enable ICMP traffic for my app to DB uh, policy. And I'm saying now I want to enable traffic from my app container to my DB container. So if I go ahead and now ping uh, 102, I can just ping that now. 
So what you just saw is that as a developer, now I have the flexibility and the control to basically isolate different parts of my application into containers, provide connectivity to them uh, by default, by attaching them to networks that are getting created by, through Contiv. Uh, and then once they have been deployed, I can basically define groups and policies within those groups to define how exactly or what IPs can talk to each other. And you can take this another level in terms of exposing the exact ports uh, from these containers to the rest of the infrastructure or to the rest of the comp uh, containers as well. Um, so this is kind of you know leveraging both the DevOps mentality as well as integrating with the IT admin functionality, uh, where, for example, you can attach your content networks to existing VLANs within your deployment. Uh, so it gives you the powerful combination of choosing different networking backends that works best for the IT administrator and also gives you the flexibility to incorporate those metadata and labels uh, into your entire application workflow. Um, that was the demo. I'm not, uh, there's, uh, there's other things in the demo, but feel free to talk to me after the session too uh, and I can provide more data. Uh, but this is the final slide that I have in terms of uh, additional information. Uh, again, contev.io is our website. It's all open source. Uh, there's a bunch of tutorials available, uh, and there's a good amount of videos also from previous uh, 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 demos that we have done. Uh, all of our, uh, you know, we have a Slack community where our developers are active, where a lot of our customers and partners and other companies that are interested in contributing code to it are also participating. So highly encourage you to join into that. Um, and, and I also wanted to point out here, uh, in DevNet Create, uh, at DevNet Create, we are launching here uh, the Cisco DevNet Sandbox for Contiv. Uh, that sandbox is also using the exact uh, demo that I just showed. So whatever I just showed you, actually, you can log on to that link that's there as part of that slide, and you can spin up a Kubernetes cluster with Contiv enabled with a VXLAN-based backend and create uh, containers and pods that attach on the same network and create policies and groups. So I highly encourage you to go and try that after this talk if, if this was interesting to you. Um, that's it for me. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Um, you showed their private network that was statically defined. How do you deal with uh, dynamically uh, allocated AP addresses, DHCP scopes? Correct. So, the, so the question, just to repeat the question, is I define a static IP address in a subnet uh, as part of the network creation. How, how do I handle dynamic uh, uh, IP address assignment? The assumption, I guess, there is that when a container comes up, you have a DHCP server that's already existing in the data center, and you want to leverage that to assign IP addresses. So we don't have that capability today. In fact, most of the container orchestration platforms have built-in IPAM capabilities. I mean, if you even look at OpenStack, uh, they have an IPAM uh, capability built in. Uh, if you look at uh, Kubernetes or you, if you look at Docker Swarm, they have IPAM pluggable drivers to integrate with your infrastructure to provide IP addresses. Um, so most of the times, you're uh, relying on the developer to define that range or working with your IT admin to get that range. Uh, but of course, I can definitely see a use case where you have that data available within an external system and you want to just use that as part of your entire deployment. That capability does not exist today, though. Sure. Any other questions? Cool. Thanks. <laughs>